Welcome to Future Talk. On today's program, we're going to talk about electric automobiles. Are they really going to replace gasoline cars? What's the state of the art right now? Our focus is on Tesla Motors. Based in Palo Alto, California, Tesla is the leading automaker that only makes electric cars. With me in the studio are my two guests. Ali Javadan runs the Prototype Vehicles Group at Tesla and he played a key role in the development of the Tesla powertrain. He'll talk about Tesla's technology and its plans for the future. Greg Zangi is head of Tesla's service network, which includes 15 service centers around the world, plus mobile service teams that respond to service requests on the road. He'll talk about Tesla's customer support and the experience of owning an electric vehicle. We'll be getting to our discussion in just a few minutes, but first, we recently visited the Tesla showroom in Menlo Park, and we have some video from that visit. So let's go ahead and roll that tape. We recently visited the Tesla showroom in Menlo Park, where I spoke to Camille Ricketts, the communications manager. What is Tesla's purpose? Does Tesla have a specific mission beyond just selling cars? Absolutely. Tesla Motors was founded in 2003, and really the mission behind the company was to make more and more electric cars available for the general public and to generally drive down the cost of electric driving for everyone. So the car company started with the Tesla Roadster, which is the sports car you see behind me. And in 2012, we're going to be moving on to the Model S sedan, which is going to be about half the price of the car. So we are really relentlessly driving down the cost of electric cars, making electric driving really available and possible for as many people as we can. Now Tesla has a lot of competition. You've got the big automakers, Ford, GM, Toyota. What competitive advantage does Tesla have that those other big automakers would have trouble matching? Well, we're actually the only electric, fully electric supercar in the world today. We were the first electric car in serial production on the road. So we have a huge lead when it comes to EVs. And uh, there are several major manufacturers that are now moving into the electric space. And really, the Roadster was the catalyst, I think, in a lot of ways for the industry to move in that direction. Uh, so we have even the big guys, the GMs, the Fords, following our example. Uh, now that Nissan has launched the Nissan Leaf, now that uh, GM has launched the Chevy Volt. You know, there is competition in the market, but we don't really see them as competition. We see them as sort of peers expanding the electric vehicle market. So we're excited to see EVs catch on no matter who's making them. It takes a huge amount of capital to manufacture cars. Does Tesla have sufficient funding to uh, get in the mass production market? We are extremely well capitalized. We've gotten good, generous loans from the federal government in order to make electric driving, uh, good, clean electric driving, more democratic for everybody. Uh, so we have millions of dollars at our disposal, and we feel perfectly confident that we'll put mass production into effect here in the next year and a half. After the interview, Camille took us to an assembly room behind the showroom where Tesla Roadsters are put together by installing the battery and engine into a car body that's produced elsewhere. Here we are standing in front of one of the battery packs. So what we call the glider, which is really the body of the car with everything except the battery, the transmission, and the motor, uh, comes to us from England, the F Lotus facility in there where Lotus builds uh, that piece of the car, and then it's shipped here to Menlo Park. We build the battery packs and the powertrains up at our headquarters facility in Palo Alto, and those items are then shipped to the Menlo Park's uh, location as well. And then the battery is actually jacked up into the body of the car, the powertrain is lifted in, we connect all of them electrically, and, uh, and you know, you, you lower it, you reassemble the suspension, and you drive off. So this is a battery right here. This large black object is the battery. This is what it looks like outside of a car. And that fits in the back of the car, and basically you just drop it in and fasten a few connectors, and you're done. Is that right? That's pretty much what, what you do, and uh, it's a large black box. There's really nothing that you need to do to it to make it work, and uh, it comes with a charge. And yeah, it's, uh, it's a heavy but extremely advanced piece of technology. I would say it's the heart of the Tesla Motors technology. Okay, so, so this is the actual motor, right? Right, this is what we call the drivetrain. It's uh, comprised of two components here. We have the 
gearbox, which other people might call a transmission. It's a single speed gearbox. And uh, then on the other side of that, the cylindrical piece that you see right there is the motor. And it's a standard, well not, I wouldn't say standard, but it is a uh, improved upon AC induction motor, which is of course how Tesla got its name because that was the signature piece of technology pioneered by Nikola Tesla in the 19th century. And this motor was designed from scratch by Tesla itself? It is. It's all designed, all engineered, and built by Tesla. We also visited the service area where I asked Camille what happens in a typical service visit. Typical maintenance session really requires an update to the firmware, which is really an interesting disparity between the Roadster and regular internal combustion engine vehicles. A lot of what we do with this car, or a lot of what makes this car better, is software-based as opposed to hardware. So uh, most of the time people come in, they inspect it to make sure that uh, everything is working properly, and then they just update the firmware like you would your computer. But as far as testing belts and drives and fluid levels, you don't really have to do that so much? There's really not a whole lot of that to test. Uh, there's no oil involved in this car. The liquid-cooled battery pack lasts for years, so that's not really an issue. There's just not that many parts that you need to replace or worry about breaking down. Is the battery expected to last the life of the car? Well, that depends what you want the life of the car to be. Right now, well, the battery life is anticipated to be over 10 years. We do have a seven-year warranty on the battery, but that's really just a contingency. The cars haven't been around long enough for us to really know how long the batteries will last, but we have every reason to believe that over a decade of ownership. How much does the battery weigh compared to the rest of the car? That's a great question. The battery actually weighs close to 1,000 pounds, uh, over 900 pounds, and uh, the car itself weighs 2,700 pounds. So the battery is actually almost half the weight of the vehicle, and uh, that's actually an advantage for the Tesla Roadster because that battery is over the back axle of the car, and since the Roadster is rear-wheel drive, that gives it a lot of stability and a lot of stiffness uh, that it might not otherwise have. That was some of our footage from the Tesla showroom, and we'll have more footage a little bit later on in the program. Ali, what would you say is the principal advantage of an electric car, aside from the fact that it's less polluting? Why would a car buyer choose an electric over a gasoline-powered? Well, they're, they're generally much more reliable because they have far fewer moving parts. Um, they're also uh, a lot easier to service, as, as you heard before. Um, Service doesn't involve things like a timing belt or an oil change. Uh, service involves just kind of a, an overview of uh, the state of the, the, the chassis and, and the powertrain and maybe a software update to the car. Um, the car is exceedingly easy to drive on a daily basis. Um, you, don't, you, know, you don't have to worry about shifting if you have a manual car. You don't have to worry about warming the car up on a cold morning. You just get in and, and drive. Um, for acceleration from stoplight to stoplight or through traffic, it's, it's extremely effortless to, to just kind of give a little bit of pe pedal effort on the throttle and, and you're zooming past 99% of the cars that are on the road. Now what's Tesla's long-term strategy? You're a new car company trying to compete with major car companies. How do you achieve that market penetration? What do you have to do to grab market share? Um, we have to consistently de deliver uh, higher quality and, and more advanced technology quicker than our competitors. Um, we're able to do that because we are a highly vertically integrated company. Uh, we do everything in-house from software to hardware uh, to manufacturing. Um, and that, that really helps us gain a competitive edge against, uh, against other competitors. How do you see the future of your battery technology? Because that's really the heart of the whole thing. Do you need order of magnitude breakthroughs to really get deep market penetration? Or is this a, a slow incremental process of improvement? Uh, I, think, I think the best way to move forward is the, the incremental uh, improvements to the technology. Um, large kind of order of magnitude improvements tend to be less reliable, um, less safe. Uh, as you may know, safety is a, is a huge thing for, for Tesla Motors and especially our battery technology. Um, and to make the incremental changes, we find that because we are already so far ahead of the rest of the, the uh, 
the game. Um, we were able to make these incremental changes, continue to, to be leaders, uh, to, and to create a safe, sustainable uh, product. Now, are other companies also working on this battery technology? Nissan has an all-electric sedan, the LEAF, uh, which uses no gasoline. Do they have as many people working on batteries as you do? Or I mean, how are you able to jump ahead of them? Uh, I'm not sure uh, how many people Nissan may have, uh, but I know that we have uh, a very dedicated, hardworking team of engineers and technicians um, that are continuously working. We have, we have uh, labs and, and tests that are going around the clock seven days a week, um, 365 days a year to, to not only test our current battery technology, but also test and validate future battery technologies. Now, do you also need a large infrastructure to charge the cars. Uh, one of the issues around electric cars is that they normally don't drive as far as a gas car on a tank of gas, and it takes a longer time to charge them. How do you overcome those difficulties? Well, the great thing about our cars is that the, the charging uh, unit is on board. It's on the vehicle. So um, rather than having uh, uh, off-board charging where you may need a, a special device that's plugged into a building somewhere, we, we can charge on anything from a standard home 110 volt outlet all the way up to a high powered charger, uh, 240 volts at higher current. Um, we're also developing technologies to, to charge at, at very high rates uh, to do a rapid charge, um, 45 minutes for example, for a, uh, for a charge on a car. And where do you think this is all going to go in the future? Do you think that gasoline cars are going to be a thing of the past altogether? Or do you think there will always be a market share for that as well? Uh, I believe at, at, uh, at some point there will be a, a totally, uh, there will be a point where, where gasoline cars will be phased out. Um, uh, whether it's for the, for the environmental impact that gasoline cars have or the cost of the, the uh, fossil fuels that go into not only the gasoline but the oil and, and those, those consumables that, that gasoline uh, cars use. Okay, great. We're going to go along to the next segment of our program. I'll be speaking to my second guest, Greg Zangi, in just a few minutes. But first, we have more video. We have a video of a Tesla bodybuilding facility, and we also have some more video from the Tesla showroom. So let's go ahead and pull that tape. 